All right, we're recording. Welcome to the oh. show, everybody. This Hello. is. Oh. Sorry. Uh, oh, wait. Did... Match. <laughs> oh, I, we... something happened to me. Oh, there no. I am. What oh, there you are. Oh, 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 what happened there? Um, I don't know, but you're frozen on my screen. Uh, yes, oh. because. Oh, I, there's Dave. There's you are. Oh, here. Uh, Hello. Oh, Dave moved. Hello. So, uh, oh. all right, so this is the Ryan and Dave and Madge show. Uh, friend Special guest, show. Madge Mossberg. Madge Mossberg. From a yes. Star Oregon. Yes, she is a yeah. real life Goonie, everybody. She's a real I life am. Goonie. She's literally from the town where they filmed the Goonies. And she can tell I... you anything about it. grew up in the Goondocks. In the Goondocks. <laughs> <laughs> you you are our goondock saint yeah uh, yeah so uh welcome to the show everybody today we're doing uh the godfather uh my pick and uh uh madge was overjoyed to uh oh. to share her knowledge of this film that she's watched yearly or <laughs> more than yearly more than yearly um She's uh, she's got it on lock, man. She knows everything about this film. Dave, uh, your history with The Godfather. When did you first see it, or is this the first time? Mm, I saw it. I saw it. Uh, when did I see it? I think I saw it with my buddy Corey. We used to do. We used to watch like um, like like if there was a trilogy of something, we'd watch like three or four. Or whatever. Yeah. I know four is not a trilogy, but uh we used to watch uh, we used to watch um like Star Trek, we'd watch like five Star Treks in a row or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he actually he kinda looks like Robert De Niro uh in the second one. But, really? <laughs> but yeah, I um Yeah, I always thought it was uh you know I don't know. I grew up in an Italian neighborhood, and a lot of people, like a lot of Italians, are like, "Ah, it's, it's such bullshit," and yada yada. And but it's fun. We're not like that, and stuff like that. So I didn't really uh, take it to heart. Yeah. Oh, there is a lot that's romanticized about this, and they do like soften a lot of. I think even what Mario Puzo had in his original novel, which I haven't read, but. I've heard that it like a lot of the like the the worst shit in this movie um, was was dumbed down considerably uh, from where it was in the book. Um, like a lot of the violence and apparently like Luca Brasi, who's he's not a, isn't a huge role in this movie, but apparently he's got a whole backstory and like uh, that is kind of insane. Like just <laughs> apparently like in the book, Vito's like afraid of him. That's why he's not like invite or he, that's why Luca was surprised. Like it said at one point, he's surprised that Vito invited him to his daughter's wedding. Cause yeah. he's, he's like the guy you don't want to bring into polite company. Cause you don't know if he's going to flip out and fucking murder somebody. But, uh, but maybe you're afraid not to. Because yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but actually he's like more afraid of Vito in the movie. It's kind of funny. Uh, like he has no idea what, uh, like, uh, the status he's given off to people <laughs> like even diane keaton's like pointing pointing him out to michael and she's like he's like who's that who's that scary guy over there who's talking to himself uh <laughs> uh yeah well, anyway when uh when he went in to talk to you know how he rehearsed what he was going to say to the godfather well yeah Apparently, um, that that take where he says what he rehearsed to the Godfather, he flubbed the line, and uh, it was the first take, and they kept it because it made it seem like he was he was scared. But he was actually scared because he was he was performing with Marlon Brando. Yeah, but so that, that uh, nervousness was real. <laughs> That's great. I, lo I love how. Um... First of all, okay, let's start at the very beginning then. Um, it opens with uh, 
with the the daughter's wedding, which takes about like thirty minutes of screen time. What do you guys think of this? Like this spending this much time on this event? Because um, I loved it, but uh, I want to hear what you guys think. Well, they're big in events, and all their in all their movies and that, and even throughout the movie, they're big in events like a wedding, the christening, everything. Yeah, it, it's a ta- they celebrate. And it's all 30 kind minutes. Of, 30 minutes in a three hour movie's nothing. Yeah, no, yeah, you're uh, right. That's yeah, one right. sixth of the movie. Come on. He has to set the tone. You 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 everybody's gotta ask him for a favor on a, the day his, his daughter gets married. I don't yeah. I don't get this. Where's the no, respect? No. Nobody <laughs> even invites him over for coffee no more. And they just show up and they want him <laughs> to right. you want you want you want you want, to, you want him to kill people for you? Show some, show some respect. What have I ever done for you to treat me so disrespectfully? What has he ever done, indeed? Uh, Can no, I do I, what that? I, what I, <laughs> what I love about this scene is that it. You only like, call me Godfather. You... <laughs> oh God, yeah, I love his reactions in that scene. Um, uh, it's that it's it's um. It's kind of juxtaposing this whole uh, idea of uh, of the two families, right? Which the Sopranos made its own gimmick later on in life um, in the mob genre, and kind of suburbanized it. But in this, it's like it takes place in the fifties, kind of this classical look. But it's like how everything's so sunny and uh, and wonderful and cheerful and like really warm and family oriented in the in the actual wedding, and then like these like narrow venetian blinds the fucking a dark office these like dark figures in dark suits in uh like the smoke-filled room it's just claustrophobic and it's like it's his two lives right the two families uh first of all like visually i like that that um uh the juxtaposition those two things uh thoughts i guess i just love the look of the whole movie yeah. And the music of the movie, just I think the move, the music kind of brought me into it, mm. and then just the look and the way things are filmed, I just really love that. Yeah, Francis Ford Coppola, man, he's uh, like, uh, I guess you know this movie is like one of the first that kind of made a point to kind of uh, to make the point about um, like diversity in filmmaking, right? Mm-hmm. Like, imagine anybody else of the era who was, like, a big director or whatever who might have been tapped to do this material. And and they went with this young guy who was kind of unproven, uh, Francis Ford, but he had authentic Italian-American heritage. He kind of knew, like, he had his family to draw upon. And he, 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 he put those, like, warmer, personalized elements into the film. And, like, they're just often, like, little details, like the cooking and the... The, I heard, uh, yeah. I heard Sorry. that he uh, had family dinners with yeah. the cast. They had yeah. big family dinners so that they, you know, could get that feel, that family yeah. feeling. Yeah. So it's like it's an entire atmosphere that he brought to it, where some other director probably just might not have, like, not have been sensitive to kind of those little nuances of, uh, of. Uh, of the culture or whatever the case may be, but it's kind of like a case to be made, right? About people. diversity, you, you're talking about Marlon Brando. He's a he's a fucking Irishman. <laughs> That's diversity. Some potato picking motherfucker. Come on. So, oh yeah, there's respect. There's 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 some racism against the Irish in this too. Yeah, with the with what the, about um, uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Sunny was Sunny Italian in real life? I don't think so. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Bad the actor, yeah. Is probably Jewish. Take yeah, a the, the actors are a different story. It's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> but at least the singular vision, at least that was, that was, uh, that was different. So, uh, um, yeah. And I love how in the, in the wedding sequence, how like, you th- it, it is setting a, like an atmosphere and a tone and stuff, and it, and it is kind of giving you a sense of who this guy is and how powerful he is and whatever, but I love how all of these people who come to him, like those little pieces of his interactions or whatever, and like information that they drop is like, is important later on somehow. Like yeah. the, 
like the first guy, he's like the Undertaker, right? He's mm-hmm. like the first guy that the movie opens on, like the close-up shot, and he's like talking about how his daughter was beaten by these two fucking assholes, and uh, he's like asking, yeah, he's <laughs> you come to me so disrespectfully, you want me to kill a guy, um, and that guy's favor is like called upon later in a really kind of heartbreaking scene where he's 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 asking him to dress up Sonny as best he can after he's been fucking riddled with because bullets. his mother he doesn't want his mother to see him like that yeah i mean i don't know who all thinks like marlon brando is like overrated or something i don't know i never thought that but in that scene when he's fucking he pulls the sheet back and he's like looking at him and he starts like just breaking down holy shit that just Oh my god, that got me. I'm like, oh my god, oh yeah, yeah. It's good to be reminded every once in a while that Brando was a man. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's not in this as much as Michael actually in terms of screen time, but um, and and it, there was that that whole dust up between him and and Pacino back in the day over with the Oscars. Did you, did you hear about this? Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, where he, <laughs> he got leading actor, uh, and Pacino got nominated for supporting actor. <laughs> Pacino's like, "What the fuck?" And I was <laughs> like, "It's my movie. What are you? What are you doing?" Well, he he got more screen time. Yeah, yeah. But Marlon Brando, he he got he got someone to uh, stand in for him. It was his girlfriend, wasn't it? No, it was a it was a Native American. Because he, he didn't like the way that That's right. were being uh, portrayed in the in the movies. Yeah. Yeah, so the, that, he, that, it. that he just had he just had his um uh, the person's an activist. I don't really know much about the person, but that's yeah. the guy who cries, you know. <laughs> they had this this big advertisement campaign and there's this tear that comes down this guy's eye. I remember that when they had that fellow go in. Mm. I, I thought she was his girlfriend, though. Yeah, it was... He sent Native American activist Sach, Sachin Littlefeather to his... Ste- uh, instead of... Instead to give, a, to give a speech. Yeah. Yeah. Which is... That's huge, man. Like, that's... Yeah. And I, I do remember him being on... I think the Dick Cavett show, mm. talking about stuff like that. Yeah. Dick Cavett show is great. Like, there's so many episodes on there, and you can you can see some real good interviews. Like before, before people were just talking about the projects they were they were in. The Dick Cavett really had some, like people talk about their life and stuff. Mm. Interesting. He. He got people to open up. He was one of those gifted interviewers, eh? Yeah. I mean, was back seen, in the but, day. Yeah, you guys got me beat on that. Uh, I came along a little after that, Dick Cavett. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I'll take your word. Kind of, kind of. Well, I mean, I, yeah, no, that was before my time, I think. And I wasn't allowed to stay up that late. <laughs> <laughs> in Astoria? But well, that's a party town. No. Isn't everybody up no. to like 3 o'clock? Well, not me. I lived in like Blue Ridge. Oh, gotcha. Um, hmm. So, uh, I do like how this movie kind of um, started a few interesting uh, tropes in uh, storytelling telling like later on in terms of like like a lot of series take influence from it like for example the idea of this rich and powerful like patriarch of a family who has a bunch of grown kids and like when you start the story like they're on top and then as it goes along it's pretty apparent that that guy's got to go at some point and so, uh, like who fills that void which which of the children is, is like the, str- the strongest the smartest the most cunning or whatever yeah. And and it it's yeah. not an intentional uh, competition between any of them, but it's like it's just narratively it's set up that way where it's like okay, well, Fredo's a fuck up. He he can't do anything. <laughs> Poor Fredo. The Fredo Poor just Fredo. Had a good time and nobody, everybody's all business around him. Yeah, he's a bank. He's a bank. 
<laughs> She's like, fuck, fuck Fredo. <laughs> I'm smart. I'm smart, Mikey. I'm smart. Um, okay. yeah, and then Sonny, who's like the fucking hothead, he's the oldest, but he's like, this no, guy's the second. Is he the second? Yeah. I thought Fredo's was... the first, Sonny's the second, then Michael. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Sonny's the oldest. He's the, uh, Fredo's like the middle child. Nobody knows what to do with. Uh, go on that. Check okay. it out there. <laughs> um, well, uh, as I looked that up, just know we agree on the fact that Michael is the youngest, yes? Yes. And then there's Connie, but she doesn't really count. <laughs> and not in the, in the, yeah, in this fucking rigid, patriarchal, old fashioned system, no. But, um, she becomes vital late. Like, of course, yeah. it's her wedding, but, but like, she's kind of involved in one of the uh, the biggest like screen uh, twists. Sonny's the oldest son. Ha ha! What was that? Sonny's the oldest. Uh huh. Yeah. Aww. Oh shit! Imagine like click. I'm, I'm done with this podcast. <laughs> I'm going to watch number two, and I'll find out for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can come back for the second. I'm probably going to pick it as my next one. Uh, okay. We'll yeah, well, I don't know if I'll pick Godfather 3. I won't put anybody through that. But I don't um, like the Godfather 3. That's just... So How nice, uh, how nice was uh, the Godfather to take in that kid? Yeah. Being a lawyer. Tom Hagen. Monsignage. He came in. The consigliere, the unsung kind of hero of these Godfather movies. He's like in the, he's not in the background. He's like there, but he's he's always just kind of moving and just doing his job, right? He's never getting in the way. He's never scheming really against the family. I mean, why would he? Um, and he's always talking sense. He's like the level-headed one in the room. Yeah, I wasn't sure why he would do that. Like, why would he take in a kid? But then, if you see Godfather Two, you realize he was. Uh, like they they do the background story of the Godfather. Yeah, and, spoiler alert. Well, no. it's, they show it pretty early. He's an orphan. Yeah. No, I, I was joking. Oh, so he really cares. At this point, yeah. nobody cares. He 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 scraped and scrounged like he. Yeah. He was a child, and he came to America by himself. That's right. Right. The uh, I almost said Coney Island. Ellis, Ellis <laughs> Island. Uh, that whole sequence was uh, was cool. Uh, we'll oh. get there in the second movie. Um, uh, so I kind of want to jump ahead to like the baptism by blood sequence. Just fucking that was another trope I was going to mention of um, how like you'll see it in a lot of dramas and stuff now too. Like it's it's, it's kind of old hat now where you have a sequence where it's it's split between two things happening where it's like something innocuous or lovely or whatever and then on the other side of it it's like something violence going down and it goes back to the nice and then it goes back to fucking someone against strangled uh, I mean you've seen it in dozens of like movies and, and shows at this point but um, this is kind of the I think this might have been like the first instance where it was like a huge sequence that was pivotal to a film and like is iconic um uh, I, I hesitate to think of another one. I'm sure there are people out there listening to that list right now. And by right now, I mean tomorrow when I post it. Uh, who are saying, that fucking movie, the one that came before Godfather. Well, I didn't think of it, okay? So, <laughs> right? So we're just in the Godfather right the now. The Godfather made an impact. It did. It did. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I love how they set up all these kids as like, and their place in the family, you know, Fredo's kind of bopping around. He's drunk at the wedding. He's 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 kind of frivolous. He's <laughs> I forgot how little he's actually in this movie. Come to think of it, he's like he just kind of flits in and out, and he's either drinking or like trying to buddy up to people and make an impression. Yeah, because he's smart. He's smart, Mikey. He just wants to drink and fornicate. Have fun. Yeah. yeah, wants to have fun. And then uh, uh, Sonny, you know, the hothead who's like, nobody wants to with him. Everybody's like, oh, Fredo, you're a dickhead. 
<laughs> You're dumb. Uh, by the way, special special guest Renee, uh, and uh, and then of course Michael, who's like who becomes of course the Godfather. Everyone knows that, but in the beginning, he's actually like a civilian, and then he's point. perfect. Like what? He's a, he's a war hero. Yeah, he's clean and cut. Every mother would want their daughter to marry him. He he was a little. There's like this this dichotomy, right? Where Michael doesn't want want to be a part of the the, the mafia life, mm. but he's not very discreet with this woman. You know, he he yeah. tells that he tells her that like terrible story of you know making an offer that the guy couldn't refuse. Mm. Like either you either. Either your brains end up on the check or your signature. It's up to you. Like, that's... Like, it's sort of like... This weird thing with his dad, like... Because he's fighting to not be in that life. Yeah. But he's pretty... Pretty casual about that, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's that's, also... Oh. I'm not like that. That's my family. It's like, hmm. Yeah. Like, shouldn't you keep that shit to yourself? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, like, because, yeah. Cause, Patch, um, Patch, would but, you but, be impressed by that if a guy was, like, telling you all these gory stories about his family? I would probably run, but. Yeah. I would run, too. Yeah. If some chick but started I, bragging you know, about her dad. You guys, uh... Yeah, I think that's the only indication in the movie that Kay, uh, played by Diane Keaton, is not playing with a full deck herself a little bit. Like, <laughs> get the fuck out of there. Um, but, but he's cute. <laughs> yeah, but she loves him. It's love. He's so young in, the, in, in, in this movie, though, eh? I know, he's so soft-spoken. Even when he gets angry, he doesn't sound like angry Pacino in, like, 1995. Uh he kind of gets his bass in his voice a little bit for Godfather 2, but, um, yeah, anyway. Um, but, oh, what you were saying about, like, discretion and, like, how he's he's a little bit uh, lax on uh, clamping down on that info. Um, and, and it's kind of, it's kind of um, uh, put up next to a few scenes later where Vito and Sonny are in that meeting with uh, Salazzo discussing the drug deal that, that never was. And, uh, Sonny's like leaning forward because he's like interested, right? But <laughs> Vito's like, he's like, uh, what's that great line? He goes, um, he's like, uh, my greatest weakness is my children. I spoiled them a great, a great deal, as you can see. They, they should be listening when they're talking. Uh, and then Salazzo leaves. They all leave, and then he's just like, he's like Santino. He's like, never tell anybody outside of the family what you're thinking again, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's like a like a number one lesson apparently of the Corleone code, and uh, Michael's breaking it. Yeah, like you're saying. So you know, that's uh, that's something that is um, it's what people in business are pretty smart about. Like you have a meeting, and if it really means a lot, the the best move is to. Be like, okay, we're going to take what we've learned from this meeting, go back and discuss it, and then deal. You never lay everything on the table in the first meeting. Right. You hold and, back. Yeah, you don't play all the I think, I think he, he just he just uh, so protective of them. Because he knows each one is sort of flawed, right? And yeah, you know. And they are his children. Yeah, especially Fredo. It's like, you know, you got to set an example, or he'd be blabbering. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's not not the baby, but he's the one who ends up being babied, like even by mm -hmm. Michael, which is like it spurs on that whole plot line in 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 part two. Uh, he feels like he's in the shadow of his little brother, and that has obviously tragic consequences. But you see, a, oh, you don't see a lot of it here. It's mostly about Michael and and uh, Vito in that father son relationship. But 
I mean, it's the it's there. It's percolating, and that's why part two is like, you know, it's very important. You kind of watch those two back to back because they're yeah, kind yeah. of one movie, right? Um. Uh. Yeah. So the horse head. Let's talk about the horse head. Oh yeah. That was real, by the way. Yes, it was. Real horse head. Back in the day when you could, you could fuck animals up, horse? no problem. Well, it wasn't like <laughs> they went and they. <laughs> It was probably Killed going to the blue factory to begin with. Yeah, it was like a it was it was, how, a do you, how do you know Francis Ford Coppola wasn't like okay, I don't like these three heads. Can you can you can you get a better head? Give me one that looks right. I need, a, I, need a, I need a horsey looking horse head. Not just not not just not this Mr. Head. head. Yeah. Who's gonna who's gonna be scared of that? <laughs> get me a bigger head! Oh God, and that fucking oh that sequence. Twenty heads oh, later. Okay, I like number nineteen. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're yeah. using the we're using real blood. Of course, we're using real blood. Yeah. Uh, I love how uh, the music by Nino Rota. It says here, uh, great score throughout. But I love how in that one sequence it turns into like a fucking uh, Bernard Herrmann psycho score just for that one uh, bit. <laughs> Yeah, they can use that music. In, they can do it very softly, like a lullaby, and then they can do it very, like that one, you know, very. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, very uh, intense. jarring. Intense, yeah. yeah. Um, so you were talking about it, the look of the movie earlier, Madge. Uh, yeah. Cinematography by Gordon Willis. I love how this this movie kind of is like an authentic. It's like visually it's a visual feast like an uh, like an authentic italian meal it's like rich yeah. colorful textured it's very yeah. meaty and uh, uh i don't know textured was a good word what do you think dave <laughs> i'll go with textured that's it that seems like the operative word for this yeah it was textured many layers many yeah yeah like a lasagna I really, think. really plays with perspective in this. Like, visually, you know, you'll be in one room and the the people will be in the next one down, and mm. you know, he he the way the way it's shot, you it makes you feel like you're there. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a very, it's kind of teetering between uh, like realism and like artful. Um, uh, a, a painting quality. I'm not quite sure what the word would be, but um, you know, like every fucking frame, you could kind of you could blow up and like put on your wall as a as a like a Renaissance painting. It's got that kind of quality to it, like rich colors, textures. Again, that word because uh, it feels so tactile, lived in, and fucking. Um, it was like just a, beautiful. Yeah. 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 What did, what did Coppola do before this? Like what what gave him the uh the go ahead for this one? Like what did he Um like this previous film? <clears throat> yeah. Um he uh he, he directed The Rain People in 1969. I've never heard of that actually. He co-wrote Patton in 1970 and won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for it. Uh, and then the next thing he says, the Godfather. Oh, yeah. Patton, so, Patton was, um, what's his name? George C. Scott. George C. Scott, yeah. Oh, Robert Duvall was in uh, Rain People, so that's... And James Caan was, too. Okay, so that explains, you know, the loyalty <laughs> some directors have with, yeah, with actors. I've never heard of the Rain People. There's a recommendation for our listeners and for me. What? We'll have to check it out. Yeah. Uh, Where would you find it? it? Yeah, exactly. It seems it seems like it might be something rare. Uh, yes, yeah, that's all I can James find. James Con Italian? James Con. I, I don't know. So. What it, Con what it, sounds... Uh... On. Yeah. Hold on. James Con. Uh, uh, Jewish. Is it Jewish? Jewish. More diversity in this film. 
They should be hailed for all the Their diversity. <laughs> that's I met. Like, that's like uh, that's like what's his name? Who's the best actor in the world right now? That guy, number one, uh, uh, DiCaprio. Da- Daniel Dave Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. Oh, that's me, Daniel Day Lewis. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Day. Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. That's like getting that's like when he did my left foot, and there's tons of people out there whose left foot don't work. And he stole he stole work from them. Same right. thing. James Kahn steals work from another Italian. Well, I was mostly just talking about the direction, but you you're right on the acting front. I'll give you that. It's like I bet Pacino's not really Italian either. Probably Spanish. And then he ends up being uh, Elf's dad. Are you kidding me? He's getting work hand over fist. Like, this is ridiculous. Who's Elf's dad? Who's hiring the Italians? Come on. A5. Fuck it, the cats. Going to need a lot more horse heads to make all that happen. Um, Horse heads. Yeah. So, um, I said black, not brown. This is dark brown horse head. Yeah, yeah, and it needs a white spot on the head. Remember, we shot, we had that shot, and a white thing on the. Fa- Get me another head. Okay. Yes. Big yes. wedding. I think it shows how important family is. Yes. Yeah. And if you get anything from this this film, it's about family, and it's about like. Protecting your family and honoring your family and these these very deep feelings for family is what causes all of the fucking mayhem. You know, sure, someone kills your, your brother, you go out and you and you and you seek revenge, you you know, you kill my one of mine, I kill two of yours. Yeah, it's, it's like nobody calls the police. They don't deal with the police. They don't call the police and be like, "Yeah, they, you know, so and so killed my brother." Because there's a code. There's a you don't get the police involved. You deal with it yourself. But there's also and were the, they all? Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, man. Go ahead. Were they all heads of the family? Like there were five heads of five families. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. see, they were families, so yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like gangs and that. They were families. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's also the, the uh, like, the idea of them all going to him for a favor uh, to do things that they either can't do or, like, elements of justice, right? Like, what happened to the guy's daughter, uh, other such things like that. Like, you can't go to the cops for that stuff, right? Either they're ill-equipped... Or they're corrupt, or they don't give a fuck because these are Italian immigrants, right? Or Mm -hmm. because at the time, 1945, like Italians were still, you know, uh, discriminated against and, you know, seen as an other. And so, like, you can't go to the fucking cops or whatever. So, but it's interesting how the one guy who who disrespected me so much, um, he he went to the cops first. Like, he actually did it the right way. He tried to do it the right way because he was told, this is America. I'm I know, free. but he's saying that was the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, with our yeah. problems. He yeah. tried, but they wouldn't help, so he had to go to the Godfather. Yeah. Oh, bathroom break. Uh, <laughs> yeah, talk amongst we're, lucky. we're lucky Dave was wearing pants for this event. I know. Um, yeah. Uh, one you where never know when the guy went and scratched his butt. So. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, Dave's right. Like that—that's kind of the essence of it, right? Like, I mean, the cops are there for whatever, but I mean, for, for a lot but of they these can things, choose who they're going to help. Yeah. And if you're Italian, yeah. and the and the reality is, the only help you're going to get is from your own uh, community. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 And so, like, he tried to do it the right way, whatever, but he got. He had no choice because the world kind of forced him into the arms of the Godfather. Like, to get justice, he had to go outside the law. He had to go to this other guy. Um, And it's kind of interesting how that's 
again, all, all this stuff has a point where it's like it's it's compared to Michael, right? Mm-hmm. Who is supposed to be the chosen one? He's supposed to be <clears throat> the clean one, the one who's um, away, like kept apart from the business. He's supposed to go on and be like a senator. Like I love that scene later on when they're just talking in the garden or whatever. He's like, "You were supposed to be a senator, a governor, Corleone." Um, and he's like, I never wanted this for you. And I, and I kind of, it's hard. You got to kind of read into Brando's performance, but I got the sense that that's true. That he wanted more for Michael, and that he didn't want him part of the business. But at the same time, as as it goes on, and he's kind of watching Michael develop as this like head of the family coming up behind him. Because of yeah. course, Fredo Fredo can't be trusted. He's not a fucking head of the family. Sonny was too hot headed. I did, yeah. And so, yeah, he was more even keeled. Yeah, and he's like, he's actually perfect for that role. Yeah. And, and by the end of the movie, he's actually worse than Vito. Because Vito, like, Sonny gets killed, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm sure he felt like getting revenge, but he goes to that meeting with the five families, and he's like, he's like, I'll do any deal that stops the war. Like, he, he has the wisdom now. I guess maybe it's the age. It's he's getting just, old. Yeah, he's just tired, and he's like, it's not going to do any good. Like Dave said, like, I kill one of yours, you kill two of mine. Like, it's just going to go on. There's no, like, business is going to be interrupted, for one, but also just the pain. Is it worth it? Like, let's stop it now while we can. Whereas Michael, at the fucking end, goes the other direction. <laughs> he's when like, his father passed away? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I'm like, holy fuck, this guy's savage. He's killing everybody. He's cleaning house. He's cleaning house. Dad's gone, so I'm going to clean house. He's so fucking cold by the end of the movie. Like, that's one of the great turns in uh, American film history. Like, holy shit. Um, Dave, what do you think of that? That arc from, like, golden boy, war hero, uh, not a bad guy, but maybe a little aloof, but no indication that he's going to be a fucking stone-cold killer by the end. Well, they're in the cafe, though, when he blew away that police chief and that head of that one family. That's what sets in the him beginning. on his path. Yeah, that's what sets him on his path. But before that, he's just kind of... He's a perfect child. Yeah, he's like... He saves his father, but he doesn't really kill anybody. He kind of bluffs his way out of a dangerous situation. I, I think he... He... Like his... Like his... Uh, he... He, I think he tried to, you know, not get involved and try to. It was his choice. I don't think it was pushed on him. I no. Think he, I think he just thought for himself that no, nah, I don't want to live like this, and you know, um, I guess you you kind of want to go legit eventually, you know, because it's pretty stressful being doing illegal stuff all the time. Well, yeah. didn't he tell Connie that they were going to be legit in five years or something at some point? Or yeah. was that the other one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he just keeps saying it and telling himself that. Yeah. Um, but as far as going from, like, whatever, choosing not to be a part of the family to <laughs> having to, um, you know, bring retribution for what happened to his brother, it's like... it. It's like... He's thinking, ah, I, d- I don't have a choice. I have to do this. But there is another choice. You can choose to be, you know, to not retaliate. You can, you know, but the, the, when, you're, when you're brought up in a family like that, and it, and, and it might, you know, there might be families that maybe not aren't into the mafia, but you might be, a, you know, a family that's into business, maybe a larger, wealthier family. And there's certain expectations. You don't, you don't, you don't want to bring any any shame to the the family name. Like it's really important, right? Yeah. And uh, it's a brand, right? Yeah. Yeah. I so he tried it was to, more like right that. By, you know, to 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 do right by by him and his family name. But he 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 felt locked in, and you yeah. know. He he still it, it it comes down to him making the choice. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, I mean he makes that first the choice to do that first killing of Salazzo and um, and uh, Sterling Hayden as the chief there, McCluskey. Which was, by the way, was like that was a phenomenal scene. Like that's oh probably, yeah, 
Uh, one of the best, uh, like the just the tension and the way they had the train, the train build up, like do, 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 as the subway's going by, and yeah. uh, and then there when he's trying to find the gun and he, it's like he couldn't find it in the beginning and he had yeah. to reach, reach really high to get it. Yeah, and I'm going, oh no. Well, Pacino's <laughs> kind of short, so I mean, there's there's that too. Um. But I love how it, that the train screeching, like mm-hmm. in, in those moments, was kind of like uh, uh, represented his state of mind. Yeah, because yeah. he's in, he's under so much pressure, and he's I imagine it would just be like white noise or fucking you can't really concentrate. It's just this overwhelming thing. Like I got to do this, and like oh my god, did you know I'm gonna do something? Or and, and uh, it just builds up in specifically in those moments when he's he's at a like a turning point. Okay, I gotta get the gun. Okay, I got it. And then he's out there, and then the killing is about to happen, but he's like hesitant, right? He, like, because they told him, he's like, once you get the gun, come out shooting. Like, that. those were his orders, but he comes out and he comes like, and goes I back to dinner. He, wanted to, he didn't want to screw it up either, you know? Yeah, true, yeah. Mess of it, because it, it could have gone south pretty bad. Like, there's lots of people around. Yeah. You know, they. Like when you're dealing with a seasoned officer, you know, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they, they, you know, but um, yeah, that was Sonny telling him to go shooting his shooting, and he was so calm, yeah, and so like precise. And like Chino is so good in this movie, kind of underrated because like Brando's the one who gets all the, the top billing and like the the. He gets the iconography of this movie. Like, he's all over this film. And, like, the poster, all that shit. You think of Brando and you think of The Godfather, at least part one. Uh, yeah. But Michael, like, Al Pacino is doing some, like, incredible, like, understated as fuck compared to, like, Heat, you know, later on in his career and his movies like that. She's got a great ass! You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a very different style of performance that he, he got into later. But in here, he's like... If you're just watching it and not really paying attention, it's like he's not doing anything. But he's a good he's a good eyeball actor. Yeah. Like his yeah. some people act with their whole face, but in this he just the way he moves his eyes is just like perfect. It's just like you're like man, this guy, you know, this guy's really into it. Plus he apparently he actually wired his his mouth shut to to know what it was like. Oh. With a broken jaw. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, his method, I guess. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that was uh, a one, right? In Godfather 1? Say yeah, again? I thought, yeah, because who who hit him? Uh, the cop was, hit him. Yeah, 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 when he was, yeah. I love that bit, too, by the way. It's it's, it's kind of a... Well, the whole thing is kind of suspenseful when the, all the people disappear from the hospital because they're setting up that hit. And he moves his dad... And then the other guy, who's the son of, I think, the one of the guys who asked oh, for yeah. favor at the beginning. Yeah, the baker. <laughs> ah, a baker. There you go, Madge. Another connection. Yeah. Uh, um, Enzo the baker, who looks like kind of like imposing, sort of, or just enough to do the job. And he's like, come with me, man. Go downstairs and wait for me. And he's like, put your hand in your pocket. Word. Yeah. Put your hand in your pocket like you have a gun and just stand there. Yeah. You'll be fine. You'll Pop be fine. Your collar. But yeah, yeah, he like fixes him up to look all gangster. And Dude, it works. You don't you don't mess with someone with a pop collar. If that collar's up, yeah, get the fuck out of there. Yep. Because if that pop collar's up, you're going down. They're not playing That's by it. the rules. Nobody puts their collar up unless there's a chill. Right. And that was a lovely warm evening. So yeah, and you don't they, trust anybody who does that. They, they had to drive by. True. True, man. True. Uh, so, uh, okay, we got the horse's head. Um, uh, the assassination of uh, of Vito, or the attempted assassination. Uh, so, it's funny. Um, uh, someone said, someone asked the cinematographer or the director, or whatever, or Francis himself, I forget who, but they they thought that the sight of oranges in the movie, like mm-hmm. uh, uh, preconceived, uh, like danger ahead or an omen or whatever, 
every time Vito in oranges because he dies later with the orange. He's going to, yeah. Yeah. And this, and he gets assassinated when he's going to shop for oranges. And the guy's like, no, no, there's just a lot of browns and stuff. And we just wanted some color in the frame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it works. It still works. He could have just bullshitted him and said, yeah, you're right, man. We did intend that. Uh, yeah, that's just interesting. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, yeah, uh, indication number however many that Fredo was ill-suited for fucking in charge of anything. That would be there. Uh, yeah, when uh, they start gunning him down, he like pops out of the car and he's got his gun and he's just like, uh. <laughs> I mean, I, I he's a nervous Nelly, guys. He's he's just a he's just a nervous Nelly. If he's not drinking with whores, he's just a mess. Yeah, I mean, that'd be me in that situation. I'd be bumbling and Sorry, fucking crying, say, too. Uh, yeah, but did you grow up with that family? You guys talk. I'll just listen. Oh, no, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying? Uh, no, I was just... <laughs> oh, Skype, you and your delays. Um, uh, I know I was just, I'm just saying that would be me in that situation, too. So I'm, I'm only criticizing to a point. Just in comparison to uh, anybody else who could have been in that role. But uh, did you grow up in that family? I a family not. like that? Uh, I don't know, maybe I did. I don't know, you know. Uh, Do you have no, a gun around? Uh, <laughs> uh, just these two. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, what else we got here? Um, so kind of back to what we were saying in terms of Michael having the choice. I love how that's that's highlighted in that scene with Carlo at the end where he, him and his goons like go to his place and like this is after he's been outed basically as having been the one to set up Sonny to get killed and he's like he's like I know, I know you did it just tell me you did it and uh he's like trying to calm him down he's like I'm it's like what do you think I'm gonna make my sister a widow or whatever he's like just don't lie to me don't lie to me it insults my intelligence and so he gets him to admit it, and then his whole plan that he tells him is like, okay, you're going to go to the airport, you're going to go to Vegas, you're getting the fuck out of here, you're not going to be part of this family anymore. And like you were saying about choices, like, that was a, I mean, that was a choice, right? To actually go through with the plan he was telling him, right? To to banish him? But well, then, they like, did. what? They did. In the car going there, they got him with the piano wire. Well, that's the thing. They didn't. They didn't plan on doing that at all. They're just like, no, 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 fuck you, you're dead. Um, yeah. So yeah, he made the choice. He's like, he could have banished him and like taken away all his power and ambition and stuff and like neutered him essentially. Um, but no, he's just like, no, I'm going through with this. Everybody's fucking dying. Whoever crossed me or my family, we're tying it all up today. <laughs> you know what it's like? It's it's like. Uh... You're taking you're you're taking a piss in a urinal, and you drop twenty bucks in there. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. And you're like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck this. Take a hundred bucks and you throw it in the urinal. Because now you're going in the urinal not for twenty bucks, but you're going in for hundred and twenty bucks. So now you got a reason to fucking get get down and dirty in the urinal. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't go there. Sure. I think you have something there, Dave. Maybe uh, I'll have to give that a think. He's already, he's already, he's already dirty. He's already. Yeah. Uh, what's one more? Yeah. He killed people for his. He's already in. He's in. He's already killed two two people for his family. He's already planned the murder of everything. He's he's. He's just uh, he's he's in it now. So he's not gonna. It's not like he's gonna. Um, not be whatever. He's not going to take care of business now. Yeah, he had already killed all the like heads of the family. His sister's, his sister's husband is just like fucking nobody. Like it's nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? Already, well, he's a... it, it, especially like he's been to war. Yeah, you know. It's nothing. Well, that guy was a wife beating piece of shit. So I didn't really feel any sympathy for him when that fucking happened but uh yeah but it's like, it's like don corleone says 
when the guy goes, the guy goes, uh, um, they beat my daughter. I want them killed. And yeah. Corleone goes, that's not justice. Yeah. You, you, uh, you know, they, they didn't kill your daughter. Yeah. So you don't take a life for not taking a life. Yeah. But yeah. he, he took his life. He went past the moral values of his dad. He actually went further than his dad would have. Well, actually, the guy, he, well, Carlo did set up Sonny to die, so he was responsible for that death. So you could say there was, you know... you know, Tit for tat? Yeah, I mean, Sonny already kind of got retribution the other way uh, when he kicked the shit out of him in the street <laughs> for beating his sister, uh, which is a great oh, scene when he's yeah. got the fucking trash can lid and he's just going... <laughs> 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 I was like laughing. I know, probably it's yeah. I'm a sick fuck, but whatever. Anyway, um, but what you were saying, like in terms of like him, his killing, it like it the motivation for it changes from where he is earlier in the movie to where he is at that point when he's becoming the Godfather. Like early on, before his first killings, like when he sets up Salazzo and all that, he's doing it to protect his father because he knows that these fucks are not going to stop coming. Like, he feels he has no choice because this is the only way to end it, to get rid of these guys. Because otherwise, they're just going to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, and eventually they're going to kill my dad, maybe Sonny, maybe, you know. The whole family. The whole family. Like, this is not going to stop until these guys are gone. So you can kind of understand why he goes through with that. Whereas he's got all the power at the end, and he has that choice that he didn't have in that, in that sequence there. Where it was life or death for his family. In this case, it's like, no, I'm just gonna fucking get rid of you because you did this thing to my family. So, so in, he was doing it to protect in the earlier scene, and in this, he's just doing it out of revenge. And power. And power. Well, and appearances. Really. You have to. You have to. You have to show strength, or people will fuck with you. You know, it's like a a, a weak fish in a in a school. If if they start, you know, flip flopping, the other ones will just eat it. They like it's it's cruel. Yeah, but that's what happens when you get involved. Like you know, you gotta you 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 can't be doing these things, guys. You, you know, you can't be setting people up to die. You can't do it. Like no, it just it just shows you that you know, like nobody wins when you get involved in major crap like that. But then nobody wants to watch a movie where everybody everybody's happy in the family, everything's great. Like, you know, the yeah, we went to Disneyland and got some mouse ears. Ooh, I don't nope. know. The, what? the Vegas seems seem seemed pretty fun until uh, things got tense uh, with Mo Green. Uh, haven't mentioned him yet. He's just the asshole that Fredo's in business with. <laughs> I found them exciting because I have been to Vegas in that day, way back then. Oh. So that was really cool. When it was a mob town. It was, yeah. Right on. I even put uh, a quarter in a slot machine. Back when the when Vegas had class. Yeah. It doesn't have class anymore. It's corporate it's, bullshit. Yeah. yeah, it's a Disneyland for adults. I was literally just gonna say that. <laughs> it's oh my god. For uh people to do to do um uh, to go there and like people who perform, it's a place for them to just like retire. <laughs> yeah, well, settle down, raise a family, so you're not traveling all the time. And yeah. you know, but gambling's gone down. They used they used to make all the money from gambling, but now it's nightclubs. They make almost as much, if not more, money from nightclubs than uh, than gambling in Las Vegas and UFC events. Bringing in a lot of tourist dollars. Yeah. Um, and old, old lady bus tours. <laughs> I learned that in Beavis and Butthead Do America, an <laughs> educational film. Um, slots! 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 <laughs> yeah, slots! We travel 100 miles! Uh, um, so. Uh, what? Playing slots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my god um, uh, where to go with this oh did you guys know this was the highest grossing film not only in 1972 
but at the time it was the highest grossing film ever. Cool. Kind of hard to believe, just in ten- terms of like how far our attention spans have come, uh, or af- how far they've gone down. That a movie that's three hours fucking long was actually popular and like profitable, whereas now you'd ha- you have to throw that shit on Netflix and people watch it in like three sittings. Yes, uh, remember you guys in the Irishman? You were complaining about that. I was so long. Did I? I might have been doing it for exaggerated effect because it is very long. But I mean. Hey, me and Dave were fine with it. We just kind of whatever. But Andrew just had to keep smoking and smoking and smoking and smoking and smoking. And Brenly can't go ten minutes without asking uh, how we're doing and stuff. So uh, it seemed a little longer than three hours. Well, actually, it was longer than three hours. Um, uh, yeah, you know the the Godfather went by pretty fast. It's pretty. Oh yeah, this is a very watchable wonderful. movie. What? It was wonderful. Like the music and the visual and the Yeah. Um you know, it's it's funny. Um I always consider this like a favorite film of mine and I would I would say that, but I hadn't like seen it in years. But I still felt comfortable saying that even though it's not a movie I'd rewatched much, but now that I have rewatched it, I am doubling down on it being like in my top whatever cuz Holy fuck, what a meal of a movie. Uh, it is so fucking good. Like, it's so long, but it's you don't feel it. Like, it's so watchable. It moves, and it's it's vibrant. Yeah. And it's not the stuffy fucking thing that some people might expect going into it. It's a classic film. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy drama. It's about this family, you know. Because when I worked my way up to finally watching it back in the day, that's kind of where my head was at, where I was, like, intimidated by it. Like, it's, oh, it's in the top five movies of all time. It's whatever. It's Brando. It's the best ever. It's Pacino. It's going to, holy fuck. And, but once you get past all that and just fucking watch it, yeah, it's, it's like the perfect amalgam of, like, art house European style drama with, like, Hollywood uh, uh, like pacing and like acting and and it it moves. It's, it doesn't. It's not. Stagnant. It's not static. Yeah, it's not stagnant. It's not anything like that. It has a life, and um, yeah, it's not any of the negative things you may might think it is. And that's kind of one of the great things to keep rediscovering about it as you watch it, because you can find more things in it as you watch. You know, the more you watch it, and. Uh, yeah, I have no complaints about this movie whatsoever. It earns its accolades. It's it's considered like the second greatest movie of all time behind Citizen Kane. I don't know. I'd put it maybe number one. Um, Definitely. Know, that's, that's, yeah. a, that's, that's a taste thing, but, you know. So, the three movies add up to like nine hours. So, today's, yeah. what's the average length of a uh, an episode on a, like, say, um, an Ozark or or Breaking Bad is it an hour for uh, an episode? Yeah. Or is it forty minutes? Uh, well, for Breaking Bad, it would be like forty, forty-five minutes. Yeah, but because they had commercials, but uh, Ozark usually they run about an hour each. Yeah. It would have been like a full season then. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Imagine if it came out now and it and it was a, like a series. I think it. I think it would have been. It would have. There'd be enough there if they didn't kill everybody off so fast. <laughs> to do um, thing pretty interesting, right? If they did the Godfather one, two, and three as one season of television, people would be shitting on its ending like they did Game of Thrones. <laughs> just like that series, it, it it was so good, and then people fucking hated not- the final season. Oh this, yeah. It's like they hate Godfather Three, so I, <laughs> I don't know if I'd do that to it, but um, the, at least the first two are incredible. Um, I haven't seen the third in a while though, so maybe it's we can revisit that. that at some point. It's not that good. No, no. It does kind of bring Michael full circle to kind of compare him to Vito in his later years, which was interesting. Uh, yeah. Like, how it basically summed it up as, like, Vito, by the end of his life, 
especially after his assassination attempt. Like he had so much wisdom, and he kind of he kind of let it all go, and he 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 learned what was important. You know, the family that remained to him, not revenge and business yeah. and all that shit. Whereas Michael kind of, you know, his his tragic arc is that he he went the wrong way. He just yeah, kind of, and he, he ended bad. up with no family. Yeah, he was he alone. died alone. Yeah, yeah, spoilers again. Um, yeah, he ended up his fucking wife hated him at the end. His sister and it kind of, I don't, can't remember if she forgave him or not. I doubt it. Um. Yeah, he was just like a lonely husk at the end. Whereas Vito, like, died playing with his grandson. Grandson, yeah. Yeah, that was really nice. I wonder what they had, what was supposed to be in that little spray thing. Was that, like, DDT or something? Yeah. <laughs> Is that water or something <laughs> there in there? Was. There was, but I think they're like, oh, don't throw that out. Give it to the kid. Put some water in it. Give him something to do. Yeah. I was <laughs> thinking that, too. <laughs> That's why Vito died. Yeah, is he like spraying chemicals at him? What the fuck? <laughs> He's spritzing some fucking miracle grow. Um, yeah, when he fell down and died, the kid was, was la- laughing. He thought the guy was playing. Yeah. That was some good, good acting. It was so anticlimactic, but like he kind of, he kind of grew to love Vito as like a grandfatherly figure by the end of the movie. And you're like, you're like, aw, <laughs> grandpa died. <laughs> Like, this feared gangster who's, like, imposes his power from afar to the effect of, like, fucking putting a horse head in your bed when you don't even know it. Uh, he's that powerful, he can get to you any time. And then he just dies in his garden, in his tomatoes. But you know, that might be the way a lot of them die. <laughs> hey, man. What are you going to do when you retire? Unless they die, you know, in other circumstances. Yeah, it could have been worse. Could have got more bullets. Uh, I don't know. Five seemed to be enough. <laughs> Till they I weren't. think Sonny got all the bullets. <laughs> oh, fuck. I love... Okay, that, just, that made me think, yeah. They shot Vito five times and he lived, so they're like, okay, if we do this again, <laughs> just bring fucking Tommy guns. You know what? Bring ten guys, too. All of them with Tommy guns, just to be sure. Yeah, when Vito, when they shot Vito... Yeah. I love how his, like, when he fell and he was injured, you know, like, kind of like a dying scene or whatever. And yeah. it, it was quite interesting because he fell. And it was like, it just kept going and going. Yeah. <laughs> That's Brando method acting. That's yeah, that. yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is how, it, this is how it, I would really die if I was shot in the back several times. I go down slow and I keep going. And going down, but trying to stay up, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, Marlon, just, just, all right, roll the, whatever, go. <laughs> Let him do what he's going to do. Because I think, you know, enough stories has gone around where it's. Hey, uh, hang on, guys, he's still dying. <laughs> Francis, are we going to cut? Just, just give it. Let it roll, let it roll. He's yeah, still... he's got to be still. It says in the script, he's got to be laying still in the paint. There's still a breath. I know people are hungry. But he's still dying. Yeah, they're just looking forward to Francis' big fucking family dinner. <laughs> oh, I love the line. This is apropos of nothing. I'm just veering off somewhere else. When they kill um, the guy who, like, set up Vito, because he's the guy who called in sick. Oh, yes, it's, yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, this is like pre-Goodfellas. This is like, you know, this is the first instance in a film where like, you get that sense of the mafia where they, they come at you with a smile. Is what uh, how Ray Liotta puts it in that movie. He's like, it's like you're not gonna die by somebody, you know, coming up, you know, as a sneering fucking villain and gonna kill you as an enemy. No, no, no. It's your friend who's gonna grab you by the shoulder and fucking put a gun to the back of your neck. Uh, they do that to this guy, and he, like the guy t- gets up and takes a piss, and then they, they do it, they kill him, and then he comes back to the car and he's like, leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> I love that line. I don't know why. I just, Have you had cannoli before? There was before? no blood splatter. The cannoli oh. was in the front seat. And yeah. they, it was as clean as anything, but they shot the guy in the front seat, and the cannoli had no blood on it. That's some good cannoli. I don't think I have had cannoli. Well, at least not authentic cannoli. Uh, That's how you know you're working with a pro. Yeah. 
<laughs> when they don't, don't splatter the pastries, <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> yeah, don't don't blood spatter with. Oh. Oh. I thought I had a visitor. Oh. Anyway, Madge, may I say, Madge, it's uh, it's so nice that you joined us. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, yeah. Thank you for just volunteering yesterday or today. What? I saw Ryan on 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 uh, online, and he said anybody interested. He made an invite, and I go, Oh my God, the Godfather! I yeah. love the Godfather. I love the Godfather. <laughs> did, you watch, did you watch it again recently? I did again. Oh, I watch it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might, I might take take up that uh, that tradition myself. Uh, it's a very watchable when, movie. When was the last three day holiday? Because I remember coming back here to the Fitzroy Center, and I told Matt, I said, "Yeah, I, I think it might have been Easter. No, Easter, because it was before this this closed down stuff." Was um, it Islander Day? Was that before? That might have been in February. Yeah, it was before all this Corona. Yeah. Um. And I told Matt, yeah, I spent the weekend watching all the uh, Godfather. And he goes, well, that's time well spent. <laughs> Meaning uh, it is facetiously. Hey, hey, you should you should have snapped back. Well, what, do you, what would you watch? The Lord of the Rings trilogy? <laughs> oh, he's into Marvel. Oh, hey, I am too. But um, yeah, I would never snipe at someone who watches all the Godfathers in one sitting or multiple sittings. Um, One time I was at Hillsboro, yeah. <laughs> and I watched, they had all the Godfather, and then they had Scarface on after, <laughs> <laughs> and I was uh, confused, I was really confused, I thought Scarface was part of Godfather. I told you, man, I fucking told you, no fucking kids, well look at you now, you stupid fuck. Oh god, we gotta do that movie at some point too, Uh, Scarface. That's a polarizing movie. Uh, I didn't realize that till later. I always thought it was like a much loved movie by everybody, but apparently, like, there's two camps. There's people who fucking love it, and it's classic, and then there are people who are like that trashy, fucking, uh, like overblown, fucking, just ridiculous, offensive uh, piece of shit or whatever. Um, uh, I'm in the appreciative camp, but uh, yeah, not not sure where Dave stands on that one. Scarface, what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, sure, it's a bit campy, but whatever. Like, <laughs> uh, the guy comes from humble beginnings. I, I didn't really like the way he went out, though. <laughs> I, I think that was perfect for him. That was exactly how he was going to go out. That's pretty crazy. The whole know. sister storyline was fucked up, but uh, yeah, that was weird. But um, anyway, so... That's that movie. Uh, Godfather One. I guess we've wrapped it up. Um, any other thoughts on the on the film? Classic. And we just ripped through. I have many Godfather whatever. Like in life, I think of Godfather all the time. Like you know the door that that goes around the trilly door. I'll go by and I go, oh, this is exciting. I get to go <laughs> through a Godfather door. Oh, when they trap him and they kill yeah, that one yeah. guy. <laughs> And then they shoot him. <laughs> yeah, can I get, can I just um can I just admit that a couple of the people they killed there, I didn't know who they were, and that was one of them. Who was that guy? One of the big guys. <sighs> okay, so the Mo Green who got shot in the eye that and the eyeball. Tape, that, Yeah, that okay, he's the casino boss who wasn't playing ball. Uh and then there's Abe Bagoda, who was like the traitor. Oh, oh that, I love Abe Bagoda anyway. I know, that was such a great scene. Where he's like trying to plead sort of with Tom Hagen when he realizes what's coming. He's like, mm -hmm. Okay, man, can you can you spare me for old time's sake? He's like, I'm afraid I can't. Mm -hmm. Poor Abe. So yeah, there's him and Carlo. But yeah, there's a couple guys that got killed in a moment. And then who fuck? was the who was the guy that the policeman guy shot that was way up on the stairs and they uh, That was Barzini. That was the guy yeah, who actually I was behind him everything. Hell. I loved yeah. when he fell because he fell back and over. <laughs> that was another Stunt. great fall. <laughs> That's Stunt a good man. Story. Yeah. For sure. That man got paid that day. Um, and who was the guy who got shot in bed with that girl? I didn't catch that. Like, you know, like they, they broke yeah, into his yeah. apartment and they machine gunned them. I, 
I don't know who they were. Um, so that guy and the girl and the guy in the in the whirly door, I don't know who they were. <laughs> I'll have to watch it again. Uh, have to take notes. Yeah, yeah, that was a good. Uh, that was a pretty good idea. Lock them in there, and they can't yeah. run while you <laughs> plug them. Lead. Oh, uh, here's a little uh, connection to uh, Robert De Niro, who starred in Godfather Part Two as Vito. Uh, uh, did y'all notice the fight poster in the the market where Vito gets gunned down? Uh, it had Jake LaMotta versus somebody. Of course, Jake LaMotta was played by uh, De Niro in Raging Bull. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So but just was like kind of a. Was that what? before or after this? Oh, that was later. That was eighty one or eighty. Eighty. So Godfather was before. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, Jake Lamont was a real guy and a real fighter. So I mean, he's based on a real thing, but it's just kind of funny how that. Uh, there was connection. Slipped, yeah, slipped in there as a little Easter egg that that they never intended. How could they? Uh, yeah, just kind of cool. I I had made made a note to myself mentally to make an actual note to to. To, to remember that, and I forgot until now, so that's why I'm... Whew, now I know why you take notes, Dave. A lot of this shit just fucking slips away. Does Dave look kind of glowy to you? Yeah, he, he looks like he's <laughs> got no face. He looks like bright light. <laughs> oh my god, he does. I have two <laughs> albino friends now. Uh, it's like... With Brent, Brent, with... Yeah. It's friendly with sideburns. With my... <laughs> It's the lighting. All the lights are off, but, uh, <laughs> but it's sort of light off the screen, I guess. The, the, hang on here. Let me. Uh, You're just... Is that better? Yeah, yeah. That's... There you go. I don't know. I kind of like the glowy, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Dave, oh, I, I, didn't, I forgot to check in with you before the show. Uh, did you do your homework? Did you pick at least like uh, like a few movies going forward from Netflix that you would like to do on the show? Because your pick is next. Right. Um, well, I'd like to do Hereditary at some point. Ooh, that's a cool movie. My, my kids all say that's creepy. You get I, don't, I don't find it creepy. You guys keep talking while I search Netflix. Does that right? match? What? That little girl going. Doesn't... Oh, God. That's so fucking. I'll have to watch it again. That just brings back. Uh, uh, I think maybe Snowpiercer. Might be one I want to see. Snowpiercer. Oh, uh, we tried that once, but it was off Netflix. But Hereditary is on. So, all right. We're going to do Hereditary. Snowpiercer's on Netflix, I think. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I think the series might be, or it might be coming, but I don't know if the actual movie is there anymore. I'm checking as we speak. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire is a good flick. Hello! <laughs> we should do Mrs. Doubtfire versus Tootsie. Remember? Yes. So it's like, which cross-dressing... Um, Maniac was the best. Robin Williams or Dustin Hoffman? Oh, it's definitely Robin. Yes. I don't want. I, I like Dustin Hoffman. As a comedian, people say that I remind them of Robin Williams. Not that I have his talent. I'm hairy as fuck. Oh, okay. Yeah. They uh, they tell hairy me guy. here. They call me here, Mrs. Doubtfire, like Dolly and the family. The family. <laughs> <laughs> Why? They, because I have the hat, and they call me Mrs. Because so Madge is a man. What? <laughs> Madge is really a man. I am. Um, they don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, Dude looks like a lady. Just... What does your shirt say, Ryan? This is my overhang shirt. Hangover shirt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cheers. Sorry, Dave. What were you saying? I don't know. Uh, I'll have to go on and look for a movie on. Uh, no, dude. We can do. We can do Hereditary. It's on there. 
Okay. We got wait, so man. Snowpiercer's not on there because that's a that's no, one I haven't seen. It was it was on there like a few months ago, but it's not anymore because I did watch it on Netflix and then it. Uh, yeah, sometimes they'll just drop movies because you know they keep cycling new shit in. Uh, All right. Um, yeah, Hereditary. Then I'm down for that again. Fuck yeah. Or uh, I don't know. I'll I'll have a look on Netflix. Okay. Well. Tentatively, we'll say hereditary, but hey, if you have another one, just, just save it for your next pick. Because the show goes on, baby. The show goes on. We can well, go on and on. Godfather 2, then. And then uh, Magic well, again. Well, I was going to pick that. Uh, okay, let's do All right, let's do Godfather 2 next week. Uh, and then you get two picks in a row. Sure. Uh, Whatever. That. Give, Give me time for. Okay. So do you do it every week? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I don't know. I just saw Ryan online and he said something about, did you want me to come to Godfather 2? Yeah. We'll yeah. Bring back. yeah. I felt like I lived like that, the Godfather 2, when I went to Oregon. I had no job. Uh. No nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like little Vito. Uh-huh. <laughs> Lil Vito. Oh man, when he fucking gets through. Okay, we'll talk about it next week. But yeah, that we'll was Ian at the end when he. Anyway, we'll get to it. All right, Godfather two next week. Sweet, and then uh, we'll have some Dave and Madge picks maybe going forward. Cool. All right. Well, well this guys, this has been a snap. What? This was fun. Yeah. Fun. And now yeah. my my. Thank you so much for joining us, Madge. You're... It was fun. Yeah. It's a different look. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> I have more stable internet right now. Cool. Uh, we can tell. Have so, done something to fix it for you? Or... I'm kind of doing Jerry's internet right now. Oh, okay. But I, I want... <laughs> Don't worry. Jerry's not going to watch this. Yeah, nobody's going to watch this. Um, oh, Heather wants to watch it. Or listen, oh, listen to okay. is it video. <laughs> uh, there will be a video. Oh, we, I guess we should have asked you at the beginning. Are you okay with this going on the internet? <laughs> no. <What? laughs> so okay, all right. I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't have done it if I had a problem with it. Yeah, because yeah. you know yeah, you know, we uh, we advertise and we, uh, we put yeah. our faces smack dab in your living room. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, oh, and I guess we should tell you. Um, hey, Dave, you should tell her that uh, she's being recorded. So, just for liability, legal liabilities. <laughs> yeah, she knows. She just you just said asked her if she was okay with it. Yeah. But I mean for Skype. I mean for Skype. For, yes. Yeah. I being knew that. Match. I knew that. I think uh, there's uh, is recording it legal? the call. It says Oom Network is recording the call. There's a yeah. little thing up here. Yeah, but when we record, it gives us a little warning. Please tell people on the other end that you'll be recording oh. to avoid legal responsibility or whatever. You want me to sign something? Uh, that, that's okay. You signed in spirit. That's good. Um, I can't do that anyway because there's social distancing. True, true. So you're not going to say Skype? Uh, stay, stay on. Um, we'll say bye to everybody, but you guys stick around. I just want to talk to you about some stuff. Sweet. Um, all right. Oh, Signing sorry. off from Dave Hicks, Godfather One. I give it, uh, I give it ten horse heads out of. Out yep. of I'm yep ten ten horse heads. I give it just the ten whole horse bodies. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. I love the whole it. fucking thing. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Ten right. cannolis. Yep. Ten. Godfather Three though has an awesome cannoli end. Mm-hmm. You know, we might finish off the Godfather trilogy. Maybe we'll do it. Godfather yes. 2 next week. Tune in. Yep. Yay! You're never alone. Ryan and Dave. And Matt. And Matt. And Matt. <laughs> <laughs>